football season now past the halfway point, Army, Navy, and Air Force have once again succeeded in showing the nation that academics, military training, and athletics do mix on the football field. You only have to look as far as the national statistics to prove the ability to compete with the best week in and week out. Senior Napoleon McCollum of the Naval Academy is a leader in all-purpose rushing and rushing offense, as is Elton Akins of Army. For Air Force, it's been senior quarterback Marty Louthan who has led his team to the tops in the nation in rushing offense and total offense. It's at Air Force where this year's winner of the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy may well be decided. After coming up with one of the biggest turnarounds in college football last season, the Air Force Falcons rolled into the 1983 season with renewed optimism and interest in the Academy's program. 1982 was a magical season of sorts for the Academy with Marty Louthan guiding the team to its first winning season since 1973. Fullback John Kirshner provided the power in the Falcon backfield, rushing for 1,056 yards to become only the second Falcon back in history to break the 1,000-yard barrier. Louthan goes to the air. Look for wide receiver Mike Kirby to be in the area of the ball as he and Louthan have teamed up repeatedly to move the ball down the field. All of these players and several more provided the talent for a Hall of Fame season in 1982. Five big wins keyed the Air Force resurgence last year, the first being against Brigham Young in Provo, Utah. Trailing 38-31 with a minute 30 remaining in the game, the Falcons drove the length of the field and scored a touchdown and two-point conversion to win 39-38. In Commander-in-Chief's Trophy competition last year, Air Force won first against Navy on the last play of the game as Sean Pavlich hit an 18-yard field goal with time running out to give Air Force a 24-21 victory. Next up was Army, and Air Force on the strength of 101 yards rushing by Jody Simmons rolled to a 27-9 win, giving the Falcons their first outright possession of the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy ever. A 55-yard quarterback sneak by Marty Louthan set up a 30-17 victory over Notre Dame for the cadets, propelling them into the Hall of Fame Bowl. New Year's Eve would cap this year like no others as Air Force wins 36-28. Air Force came out of the blocks fast to start this season, traveling to Fort Collins to meet Colorado State to open Western Athletic Conference action. Two big plays early in the game seemed to break the Rams' backs as first John Kirshner broke loose on a 70-yard run to put Air Force up 7-0. On the Falcons' next offensive play, halfback Mike Brown took the ball outside and went 69 yards for a touchdown. Air Force went on to win the game 34-13 as Brown rushed for 131 yards and was chosen Western Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Week. On the second week of the season, ABC TV and Texas Tech came to town, and for the Falcons, it was a chance to avenge a 1982 one-point loss to the Red Raiders. 
For the day, Marty Lauthan rushed for 92 yards and three touchdowns, and he completed nine of 15 passes for 153 yards as the Falcons took the lead early in the second quarter and never looked back. Air Force went on to post a 28-13 win. next two games on the Falcons' schedule would both be decided by air, as first the Falcons went to Laramie, Wyoming to play the University of Wyoming in what many will describe as hurricane football. With 45 mile an hour winds blowing throughout the game, the Falcon offense and kicking game never did get on track, and Wyoming took a 14-7 victory. Next on the schedule for Air Force was Brigham Young University, and passes were blowing in the air this day as quarterback Steve Young of the Cougars completed 18 consecutive passes to set an NCAA record along the way, downing the Falcons 44-28. Despite the performance of the Cougars, Air Force's Mike Kirby may well have been the star of the day. Here he's shown catching one of his eight passes for 177 yards. The Falcons kept the game close for the most part as in the third quarter the cadets trailed only 27-21. But Steve Young proved too much this day, and Air Force's record evened at 2-2. Two two. After a week off, Air Force returned to action in Annapolis as Air Force met the Naval Academy in the first game for the 1983 Commander-in-Chief's Trophy. Showing signs of recuperation after the week off, Air Force's offense rolled up 510 yards in total offense, and Marty Louthan scored five touchdowns rushing to tie an Air Force school record, leading Air Force to a 44-17 victory over the midshipmen. Mike Brown finished the day with 136 yards rushing as Air Force's offense played its best game of the season. For his efforts, Louthan was chosen Western Athletic Conference Player of the Week for the second time this season. Now, after games against Texas, El Paso, and Utah, the Falcons are ready to meet Army for outright possession of the Commander-in-Chief's Trophy for the second consecutive year. But the task won't be easy. One needs only look back as far as the 1981 meeting between Air Force and Army to see how tough Army can be in Falcon Stadium. Trailing 7-3 late in the fourth quarter after a Charlie Heath touchdown in the third quarter for Air Force, Army begins to drive the length of the field before Air Force is able to secure the win when Dave Carraway intercepts a pass in the end zone to end the threat. Through the years, the games have been tough. The rivalries fierce. But the athletes that play for service academy teams have always been among the best in the nation with a commitment to excellence that is equaled by none. That excellence was never more apparent than on October 29th when Army returned to Falcon Stadium and stunned the capacity crowd of 47,480 by taking a 17-7 lead in the second quarter. However, the Falcons were not to be stopped on this day as they attempted for a second straight Commander-in-Chief trophy and went on to roll to a 41-20 victory.
Air's Falcon Squad is blessed to have some of the finest individuals ever to play for the Air Force Academy, and we'd like you to meet some of them now in interviews conducted by Lee Douglas of KOAA-TV in Colorado Springs and aired on that station on the Ken Hatfield Coaches Show. What does it mean for you to, uh, to play football at the Academy? At first, there was only a big-name school to offer me. There was only a chance to play major college football, and the education is great here at the Academy, and a chance to fly once I graduate, and we're all interrelating into my decision here. I liked the coaching staff after meeting them, and uh, just the opportunity to come to the Air Force Academy itself, I thought was very attractive to me. And after your uh, uh, career at the Academy, ends, what's next for you? I would like to go into pilot training and uh, become a fighter pilot if everything worked out great. I, I don't know what I'll end up flying, but that's my goal right now. How does it feel for you to be part of a program like this? Well, I think I have a lot of a lot of pride in the fact that the guys on this team, you know, they go to school 21 hours, you know, a semester, and, and uh, compared to I guess the average is maybe 12 at other schools, and to be able to do that, plus the the military and and, and just to perform all your duties and at the same time have a good football team, accomplish some of the things that we accomplished, um, that makes me pretty proud, and you know I feel good when I say I'm a part of this football team. What's next? Well. Uh, I, I enjoy flying. I learned that this summer when I got a chance to learn how to fly. And what I'd like to do is, while most people want to be fighter pilots here, uh, I'd like to fly the heavies and, and travel around and see the world. And uh, so that's what I'm looking at from here. It's real exciting, I think. The team as a whole is real real close and uh, playing together for so long. I know there's, uh, Charlie Heath has started every single game since he's been here. A lot of players that have been starting since they're freshmen and, the, and the, just the type of team that the team spirit develops is real unlike any other program I've ever been a part of. And uh, I really enjoy that. A loss like uh, we suffered last week in Newton Ford it makes it hurt all the more to know that this is our senior year, but uh, something about the way the team grew up uh, makes me think we're gonna come back. Academics, military training, and athletics. The tools of training for generations of young men who have been a breed apart. The men of the United States Military Academies.